Welcome to our Tzenu. Today we are celebrating Yom Ha'atzmaut, so Chag Sameach, everybody. That's right. This is our 70th episode of our Tzenu, celebrating 70 years of Israeli independence. This is my This is the place where I want to be. A home no one can take away from me. This is my This is my chosen land. This is the place I live to defend. Hoping to find some day capture with him. This is my This is my promised land. This is the place where I want to be. A home no one can take away from me. This is my In honor of Yom Ha'atzmaut, Israel 70, and our 70th episode of Artsenu, today we are going to do a very fast review of all 70 episodes of Artsenu, the places we've been, the things we've done, and the things we've seen. So sit back, relax, fasten your seatbelts, and enjoy this super zooming fast review of 70 episodes of Artsenu, followed by a really fun review. Let's see what you can remember. We begin in the north at Har Charmon, the most northern point in Israel, where it snows, it's cold, and during the winter you can go skiing. And across to the most northern point on the Mediterranean Sea, we are at Rosh Hanikra, where the most steep cable cars in the world are, dropping you down to the Mediterranean Sea to see the beautiful caves that have been etched out by the ocean into the mountains. Next are the Golan Heights. During the winter, the high point can get snow, but during the summer, it is one of the most beautiful areas in the entire country, complete with waterfalls, grass, trees, wildlife, and just all around beauty everywhere you turn. There are vineyards and so many beautiful things, including some spectacular views of the Kinneret. South of that, running from the Kinneret, is the Jordan River. Crossing the Kinneret are some of the holiest cities in Israel, Svat and Tiveria, full of mysticism and rich with history of writing of the Mishnah, including the Yeshiva of Shem Ve'ever, Svat and Tiveria are fun places to be. We are now crossing back toward the Mediterranean Sea through the beautiful mountains. From here we travel down Kvishachov through cities like Akko on the border, full of history, including prisons from the 1940s and shuls that are date back many many hundreds of years here as well we can find cities filled with history of the authors of the mishnah and some beautiful places to stop along the sides as we travel down kvishachov nachal shofet the only wheelchair accessible waterfall hike in the country below har hakarmel is the afal pikain boat which symbolizes our desire to continue and Hara Carmel cable cars up to the top for a beautiful view. Here we also stop to learn about the making of a shofar for Rosh Hashanah. The water treatment plants along the sides of the Mediterranean and the water parks. Continuing down south, we took the opportunity to stop at Zichron Yaakov, the first established community of the hopefully soon new home of Israel. Traveling alongside us is the aqueduct, bringing water south from the time of King Herod. In the city of Chadera, we visited Hebra Hashmal, the power plant. Traveling inland, we stopped at the home of the Mishkan Shiloh, Kever Yosef in Shechem, and used that opportunity to daven in the merit of Yosef HaTzadik. South of that is Hebron and Beit Lechem where our Avot and Imahot are buried. Traveling back toward the Mediterranean is the largest modern city in the Middle East, including the, the Technion in Tel Aviv. The Modin area is complete with all sorts of history, both ancient and modern, including the story of Chanukah. And then on to our eternal capital, Yerushalayim. 
including what was before 1967, what was between, before 1948, and what is today. We had a chance to walk under and along the Chomot Yerushalayim and see some of the excavations, finding our history laid deep underneath in ruins under today's most beautiful city, Yerushalayim. Yerushalayim is not just an ancient city, but a city complete with modern and up-to-date technology and life, including entertainment in the streets, restaurants, and so much more to tour and visit. As we continue heading south, we made a stop at Bet Guvrin to see the underground olive press and nearby to visit an Iron Dome launcher. One of the things that's missing tremendously in the south is water and rain. We made a stop at the beautiful oasis where David and Shaul fought called Ein Gedi. Across the way, we visited the famous castle top fortress above the cliffs called Mitsada. Below Masada, and the lowest point in the world, is the Dead Sea, including the Dead Sea Scrolls exhibits kept in museums nearby. And our quest south continued, with stops at Mitzper Amon, the Grand Canyon of the Middle East, and Be'er Sheva, the city of wells dug by Avraham Avinu and redug by Yitzchak. We learned about digging wells through ancient times and modern times, and high technology used in today's world of Israeli farming in this area called Chalutza, an area that we raised money for to support the building of a medical center. This area has tremendous amount of growth and farming, including hundreds of greenhouses using all sorts of technology to grow fruits and vegetables in the Negev, in the deserts, in the south, in our homeland of Eretz Yisrael. Finally, we reached the end of Shvil Yisrael in the Gulf of Eilat, the most southern border of Eretz Yisrael. We discussed the battles and victories, the triumph and successes, the victory of Entebbe, the return of Jews and the Aliyah movement from Ethiopia, from the United States and Canada, the vision of Theodor Herzl, Im Tirzu Einzu Agada. If you dream it, it can come real. We toured back to places where B'nai Yisrael may have visited much, much earlier in history, but always desired to come back to Eretz Yisrael, including Shusha, and some places Averly Yardin, including Wadi Musa, where Moshe struck the rock. All in all, our hearts, our dreams, and our aspirations are to one day, like our brothers and sisters, come back to Eretz Yisrael, our homeland.